Howdy, how are you going? Uh, time for coffee break. So this is the Astrobiological Coffee Break. Bringing you the universe in plain human with coffee. Well, so what am I doing today? Be close to the microphone, Ben. Why not hold up? Uh, I was uh, messing around a little bit today, uh, trying to um, uh, make some terraforming scenarios work in Universe Sandbox 2. That's my current fave thing at the moment. And I came up with a scenario. It's a, it's a, it's the distant future, and human beings have moved away from Earth for whatever reason, and have ventured out into the stars and done their thing. And they decide, for whatever reason, tell me in the comments below what you think, to come back to Earth, and they return, and have terraformed it, and because it's been long dead and have come up with something like this so I managed to create a dead earth a dead earth type uh, uh, planet no water no nothing and have managed to terraform it because terraforming could one day apply to our own planet as well excuse me uh, we're treating our planet so badly that one day it may need to be uh, made habitable again by its own inhabitants. So I've just been playing around with that idea in this. Now this is obviously a simulation, but it gives you a rough idea of how the processes of terraforming work. So I'm going to start again and start from scratch. What did I do? First off, I assumed that. Well, my scenario was this. Okay, we'll start. We'll open a new simulation. Get rid of that. Okay, we'll change the background so we can see what we're doing. Background just does. Okay, that's good. That's better. That Milky Way gets in the way. It's pretty, but it gets in the way sometimes. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a cold. Bear with me. I'm a bit scratchy or clogged up sounding. Right now, just for the sake of the argument, the solar system is still there, but I'm only going to include two main players as far as we're concerned the sun and the earth however what I'm going to do first of all we're going to see the habitable zone of the sun alright okay so that's the sun as we know it now Usually there'll be planets whizzing around, you'd see the trails and whatnot, but this is a basic simulation. The sun, it's the distant future, a lot of time has passed. We're going to now add Earth. To... Now, Earth usually sits one AU away. And if you can see my mouse, what I'm doing with it. Now, the grid line is about 1.05. I'm going to actually pause the simulation first. Well, it has a way of uh, running away with you. So let's pop it anywhere, really. All right, get out of there. We're going to put Earth where it would usually be. Now, I've got it fairly close, but it's 1.23 AU from the sun. We'll get it back down to 1.01. It's not always exactly 1 AU because of our elliptical orbit. All right, okay, so it's within the habitable zone, as you can see. Things are all hunky dory. That would be Earth in its, in its present day uh, state, as in the Earth we all know and love. So, but I decided to play around with the future a little bit. And what I did was, okay, so again, you can see Earth right there in this green band here. Looks like a target. Out there, it's too, a little bit too cold. In there, it's a little bit too hot. But in this green band, green for go, whatever you want to call it. Uh, water can exist in liquid form at the surface in a, sta in a stable form. And this is a vital uh, prerequisite for life. Well, life as we know it anyway. But, I decided to whoops, mess around a little bit with the simulation. So, the sun has undergone some kind of 
Disaster. What's happened to it? Oh my god, Ben. What happened to it? Oh dear. It's the composition of the sun. It's still 100% hydrogen. Let's increase the iron content a little bit. Okay. Actually, it's now burning helium and other heavy elements and producing iron. Okay. Not much, but it's been enough to change it, its output. I'm also going to change its radius and mass, its radius mainly. Now this will greatly influence the solar system, see where, where Earth now is. Okay, this has happened. The sun has expanded into the distant future. The sun has expanded. Which is going to do eventually. And Earth now is in the too hot zone. Danger wall, Robinson. Let's take a look at Earth. Let's play this scenario now. How's Earth gone? It wouldn't be going amazingly well. The climate? Now. now I'm going to speed time up a little bit, okay. Zup! Whoa! Okay. And slow time down a little bit. Slow down, boy. Yummy all. Alright, oh god, what's happened? Oh dear. Earth is now a bloody mess. It's seen better days. Surface pressure is down to 65 kilopascals. Atmospheric masses decrease. Greenhouse effect is decline of nuts. The surface temperature is 207 degrees. Because over time, being so close to the sun as it now is, within this uh, basically danger zone, will turn. You can see it's orbit around the sun. I will turn that off. Let's give it a See you later. This really just kind of bugs me, honestly. It's just full there for a reason, but yeah, I hate it. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so, done. Earth, distant future. And our ancestors have returned. You find this. Oh my god, what happened? Turn that off now. Don't just see that. Earth, what happened to you? Oh my god. So anyway, where were we? Okay, we're back. I just took a short little break. Whoop, whoop, no, wrong screen. Back in US2, University of Mokka 2. So, this was what our descendants find upon returning to Earth thousands or millions of years later. It's kind of like a science fiction scenario, but it's good when I talk about science as well, on scientific topics, so. Again, you see that Earth is in a yucky spot. It's in the red zone, the zone of negativity. It's right smack bang in the middle, really. We kind of, we want Earth to be in this green band here, where this green band known as the Goldilocks zone, uh, where water can exist in liquid form at the surface. So. Do about this? Well, now the climate of Earth, reiterating, it is uh, surface temperature is 206 degrees C Celsius. Greenhouse effect is setting 55 degree, 55.3 degrees to the temperature, to the temperature of the atmosphere. <coughs> the surface pressure is a little bit low, so um. Earth's gravity is enabling to retain some atmosphere, but it's not doing its job. It's, the climate is has shut down. And this is what our, ancestors, our descendants find. I'll turn off the habitable zone so you can see space. And what are we going to do? 
Let's see what happens. We try to physically add some water to the earth. Alright, so. Let's see what it's paused. There's a comet. What's it called? Aurapex. Aurapex. Good name. Why not? Right, now we can change the composition of the comet here. Make it an icy. An icy comet. A dirty snowball. Alright. We can decrease the distance from the earth. Alright. Decrease the speed. Substantially. It was going at about 35 k's per second. Let's have it going under 600 meters a second. Still pretty fast. And. Okay, so. Comet's hit. What would that have done for the Earth? distance from the earth let's drop it in real close so it's virtually kissing the earth as you can see there real close because at this point in time uh, our descendants can move the things around in space of this magnitude. Let's just pretend it's like a sci-fi story and a science lesson all in one. I did not do that. Right, okay, so let's just let's decrease the speed a bit. Now it's being captured by us, so it's going quite slow. Somehow, not quite sure how that happened, but it missed the Earth. Ah, well, okay. Ah, let's try it again. Sometimes the simulation does that. It's weird little things. Ah, launch. That's what I should have done. Let's try again. All right now. Composition of that moon. Very watery. Right. Motion. Distance from the. Oh, right. Slow down the speed drastically. forming not just yet we have to look at the stats see what's happened climate surface pressure is actually going down according to the uh, terraforming uh, kit book the terraforming kit bag um, atmosphere can be added via uh, the additive impacts this may have happened to our own planet long long ago Impacts and other things may have brought water and other things to our planet, which contributed to uh, an atmosphere forming as well. That's a slow way of doing it. Another way of doing it is with a highly advanced uh, civilization, as our direct descendants would obviously be part of, they could build giant, uh, basically, pollution factories on the 
surf of the planet. Position them anywhere you like. Now, I can't actually do that within the simulation, but let's just say that we're doing that. And we are increasing the mass of the atmosphere. Let's just really ramp it up to about two and a bit atmospheres, two and a bit Earth atmospheres. So, Speed time up slightly. Let's see what happens. Oh, I lost the Earth. Damn. Game over. Let's try that again. Load. Uh, open existing simulation. This is way trickier than it looks. Never had it before. The rejuvenated Earth. We're trying to get, trying to get to. Right. And how do I go about it? Wasn't it? Let's start again. Right, get rid of the background. See you later. Good. By to stars, get lost. Add our sun right there. Right, add, whoops, add earth. First of all, right. Yeah, position earth should be. You should be 1.01. Right. And you'll see that the habitable zone, and we're in it. Okay, so you see the green band, Earth is right there, sitting quite comfortably within the green band. So, but what happens when we change the parameters of the sun? Expand the radius of the sun greatly. Put the earth just on the outer edge of that red zone, which Venus and Mercury currently sit in. So, let's see what the earth looks like now, or what it will look like. Remove that. Okay, so earth looks okay at the moment. Let's pretend it's the distant future. goes on. Okay. Years and years per second. Decrease the time steps. Decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Okay. And once again. Beautiful blue green model we saw before is now this. Atmosphere should be Nothing should be pretty much nothing. Let's swear the atmosphere. So it's still a summer atmosphere. So what we need to do is first of all get rid of those trails. We don't need to see those. Right. It's just hot on the earth now. Temperature, uh, what surface temperature? 183 degrees Celsius. It's hot as a nun's nasty. And what are we going to do about that? Okay, there's been some sort of stellar disaster, and the sun has expanded in radius, and this, the Goldilocks zone, which Earth once sat in, is now um, gone. In fact, Mars would be sitting in the the uh, Goldilocks zone now. I should have brought Mars in the simulation, that'd be interesting to see. We can do it next time. <coughs> okay. So what am I gonna do? We need to terraform Earth. What about 
distant descendants came back after a long sojourn throughout a space and found this waiting for them. It's going to be a bit of a shock. No water, no nothing, just a dead planet. Okay. Don't get to work, I think. How's my Earth's race? I believe. How far is Earth from the Sun now? 0.7 of an AU. It's substantially closer than it was. So what I've got to do now is move it out. Oops. I'll move it to roughly where it was. We here, see? A little change in temperature can make all the difference. <laughs> Ain't it cool? Right, so you can see a few, a few, uh, let's see, a few lighting. Let's take a look around the Earth. Using the flashlight just to get a look at it. There's Antarctica there. No polar caps. The continent, the lost continent of the Landia. Comprising New Zealand, which sits there. New Zealand is actually the, the visible part of a submerged continent. This connects to the Australian plate. There's Australia, where I call home. But yeah. This is the terraformed Earth. Parameters now. Let's, get, let's make the lighting realistic again. Okay, how's this looking now? Climate 116 still. It's not good. Atmosphere. Let's thicken the atmosphere a bit. Build some of those a planet wide network of those pollution plants. Whoops, one atmosphere. Yep. Okay. Generally, it looks pretty familiar. A few extra bits of land here and there. But by and large, oceans look to be rising. The, the, ocean, the sea level looks to be rising. In an earlier practice run, I had uh, less, less water as a result of planetary impacts. Artificially uh, introduced water. Right, so now Madagascar was connected to Africa. That's how I could tell. There it is, okay, good. Let's see, Africa, Madagascar. Now, this is would, this is, would be, uh, I guess, a, a new home for the human race. Have they been to space and decided to return home? about rejuvenating it. I've created a bit of extra of a land, a land area to uh, colonize and inhabit and exploit. But uh, yeah, Earth, what are, what's this climate like now? I've turned climate off because it uh, slows down the computer massively and it's unwatchable. I've already tried it, it doesn't work. That's some good stuff before but uh, the, just the, the video was <coughs> terrible. So, let's turn the greenhouse effect down, perhaps we can. Right. And the albedo, a bit of a, a solar radiation reflected or absorbed by the planet. If too much is reflected, the planet cools down. we can cool it down. If it cools down enough, a lot of the water gets locked up in ice. Ice caps. Which is another way of influencing climate. So I'll see where it'll go to. The planet's got to reach its own uh, equilibrium. 
to get to artificially maintain something, but if you let nature on its course, it eventually finds some sort of middle ground, a homeostatic uh, equilibrium. Oh, it's in the mid-20s to climb at the moment. Still dropping though. I have a feeling it's going to go down a lot. Now, as ice starts to form, it should start to form as we get really low. In will uh, take up water, it'll block it all up. See the planet is starting to ice up, we don't want that, so we need to effect or an ice house effect which we don't want because the earth needs to be rendered comfortable once more for its uh, long lost kids okay now we're getting there we're at hovering around 24 still going up slowly i think it will start to get to a resting point soon enough maybe position yes it is okay okay stay still All right. this temperature is slowly rising and this is a problem that we have with trying to uh, terraform a planet. Um, the planet needs to eventually be able to stand on its own two feet. And reach an equilibrium of some sort. I've slowed it down quite a bit so you can't see the temperature going up. But we'll leave it there for now. It's 28.8 degrees. We've got some extra land. We have clouds and climate. This is an interesting scenario. What do you, what do you guys think? Uh, how, how would this work? And what suggestions would you give? Like, just forget this is universe sandbox. Just pretend this is a real terraforming project. Um, rejuvenating our ancestral homeland, home planet. What would you do? If there was no water, um, yeah, no water, what would you do? This earth has no ice caps. Now, within the parameters of the uh, simulation, I can't tell uh, the temperature of any particular spot on the planet. But um, I guess the average global temperature is yeah, it's, uh, 28.9 degrees. Look at what uh, has been created here. It's essentially one giant landmass. Everything's connected. I believe. Africa, so it connected wires, land bridges to Europe and Europe, Middle East, and Asia. Now, Asia, if we wait for it to come around, change the lighting here. Right. South America is connected by land bridges to North America, as it always has been. There's Russia and Eurasia. And uh, yeah, I think the only disconnected landmass is Antarctica. And if I didn't know any better, it may be connected too. Possibly not, but hmm, cool. All that land. Oh, I just need to screenshot that. That is 
beautiful. Oh, good, a stupid circle. FN12. Right. You can go to my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group. Uh, the description will be down below. In the description thingy box down below. There's links to other stuff I do. I do podcasts as well. I might turn this uh, episode into a podcast. So right now, my uh, my interest is terraforming at the moment. I've been exploring that a bit. Excuse me. So I'm curious to know what we do. I mean, but we talk about terraforming alien planets all the time. But uh, it may be necessary to one day terraform Earth. I mean, we're going out of our way to not really look after this planet of ours. And one day, it may fall upon us to. Um, return it to its former glory. I mean, really, it's the right thing to do. Honestly. Okay. Temperature staying the same. Right. Get rid of one of those stupid selection circles because they give you the irrits. Oops. Effect 9 degrees, not too bad. One atmosphere of pressure. So let's climb it. I've turned the climb off only to uh, help the computer along. Greenhouse gases, we'll leave those alone. Some greenhouse gases are good to help maintain climate. The obliquity of the planet, we've left that now in the simulation now. Descendants have godlike power, they can move planets around. That's the early kind of cheat I decided to employ. But who knows what we'll be able to do in the distant future. We haven't uh, gotten rid of ourselves in the meantime. But yeah, I terraformed Earth, or re terraformed Earth. That may be our biggest and most important uh, terraforming project and colonizing, recolonizing our own planet. Maybe one day, who knows? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, or if you're part of my Facebook group already. Um, start up another conversation about this there. And tell me what you think. If you uh, are subscribed to this channel, uh, please do so. It's, uh, it's a tiny little channel. It's uh, a hobby at the moment, but you know, I, I like talking about this stuff. And I'm sure other people are enjoying the content that I'm putting up. Uh, give me any comments or suggestions to improve things. At constructive, of course. And you know, I can uh, ignore jerks like with the rest of them. But yeah. Thanks for watching this one. And I will see you guys soon. This has been Astro Biological, the coffee break. Bringing you the universe of plain human with coffee. See ya.